This video aims to serve as a complete guide to help the assisting surgeon and the other staff in the operating theater with all they need to know with respect to cleaning of the OT trolley, the setup of the entire OT trolley, the setup and tuning of the phaco emulsification procedure, and the correct technique of assisting the surgeon while he performs the phaco emulsification procedure. So, the operating trolley is cleaned with spirit as demonstrated. First, the surface of the trolley is carefully and thoroughly cleaned. Following this, the sidebars on all three sides are carefully cleaned. After which, the lower part of the trolley is also cleaned as demonstrated. Now, the setup of the trolley. At the outset, a sterile sheet is placed over the trolley. A second sheet is placed over it as well. And now the assembly of the trolley. A plastic sheet is then placed to prevent any soilage from any liquid leakage. That is the phaco emulsification set being placed and now the assembly of the rest. We place the eye patches, the shields which will go on to the eye later, cotton buds that are going to be used in assisting the caps for the microscope which also need to be put up and the plain green sheets which are used to cover the patient's head, to cover the eye and to cover the entire body. Steady. The sheets that are being used now are the ones that are actually used to cover the trolley when not in use. The next in line is the FACO handpiece. The tubings of the phaco emulsification machine.
the IV set and now the blades. Ensure that the blades are just not dropped onto the trolley but are lifted off by the assistant from its casing and gently placed on the trolley. The various syringes that will be required either for the blue dye as well as for the hydro dissection and delineation procedures, the stromal hydration as well as for just keeping the cornea moist during the surgery are now taken. This is the viscoelastic and now sister will demonstrate how she actually draws the viscoelastic and keeps it ready for the particular case. At our institute, we use one vial of viscoelastic, which is drawn out for every case. We tend not to move our syringes from one table to the other. This is the viscoelastic. It's been filled in the syringe along with the ready cannula, which will be used for injection. Now we move to how sister prepares the blue dye injection. So this while containing blue dye is taken. Again, it is opened. And of course, for multiple cases, at the same sitting, sister will draw out and prepare as many syringes as is possible for the use in this case, as well as for the rest of the surgeries. We conventionally use blue dye in a tubercle syringe, and then we connect it to the cannula, and that is also ready for injection. Now the setup of the IV fluid which is used for hydrating the cornea and for procuring the fluid for the hydro procedures. As you can see this we check the expiry of the Ringer lactate solution and now we set up that bottle. The lid is removed and the tip is cleaned with spirit. So also the rest of the bottle and then the sister hands the other end of the IV set to the assistant who now pierces the bottle and gets it ready for use during the surgical procedure. This is now hung up on a IV stand and It's now largely ready for use. Sister now will draw out the fluid, rather she'll fill up the fluid in the different syringes directly from the IV set. At the outset, she fills up the 10 ml syringe, which is used to hydrate the cornea intraoperatively. And then, fills up the fluid in the syringe, a 5 ml syringe, which is used for the hydro procedures and for stromal hydration itself. The trolley is now ready for the phaco emulsification procedure. We now move towards the setup of the phaco emulsification machine. We now move to the setup of the phaco machine. This is the Opticon machine. So the first step to be done is turn the machine on. So the assistant first cleans the bottle. And here's how the machine setup continues. One end of the IV set 
is introduced into the nozzle of the bottle. The bottle is now suspended from IV stand. The other end of the tubing is held by the assistant. It is uh, turned on and the fluid is allowed to completely fill up the IV tubing. All the various tubings and the cassette are snapped into its correct position. Once the nurse gives the distal end of the sterile tubings to the assistant. One end of it is then connected to the bag which holds the aspiration fluid. The electric connection is then established. The infusion from the bottle is then connected to the infusion tubing. It is then turned on after we have already primed it in the past. The bottle height raised to the desired height for the particular case. And then the machine is primed. Once the priming is complete, it is denoted by some signal from the machine indicating a satisfactory setup of the machine and once primed, the machine is then ready for use. Priming is now complete and the surgery can now take place. I'd like to just note that the entire trolley we do not change in every case but we keep the base sheet the same. We just keep changing the IV set. All the disposables are new as well as uh, the head towels. Everything else is new but the trolley largely stays the same.